Hey, Willem, how's it going? Good, Griffin. How are you? Good. I'm I'm great. Uh, just wanted to start with saying congratulations on the film. Uh, you are fantastic in this film, but also I just I think what's so brilliant about it is it's this take on uh you know a Frankenstein esque story, but it's it's done in a way that I I don't know we've ever seen before. Um, and I was just kind of curious, like why why do you think we've never seen Frankenstein tackled through? this female liberation sort of lens because I, it, when you watch it, it makes so much sense, you know? Well, we borrow a lot uh, from Frankenstein for the reanimation and some of the um, feeling of the initial setup. Uh, but after that, it's quite different. I mean, remember in Frankenstein, they transplant a criminal's brain in this, yeah, right. <laughs> this, in this man's body. And yeah. that's a key thing. Because that's very different than translating uh, 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 an infant's brain in a female body. So right. the two very different stories. Um, so basically, that was you know this this where science is overstepping something and they've made a horrible mistake and they create something. Uh, okay, he does have emotion, but it's going to be destructive because of uh, the origin of the brain, where this is a beautiful um, setup because it allows us to find a, a woman that, um, you know, can experience things directly without social conditioning and learn so quickly that she's like a truth teller. Yeah. She's innocent, but she's also the wisest person in the world because she sees clearly. And to see a person make that journey into the world with that kind of view and have it be a woman in this invented Victorian time is really quite juicy. It gives yeah. you an opportunity to, um, you know, see a lot of uh, social conditioning that we uh, make fun or uh, play around with or, or question a lot of social conditioning that we take for granted. Yeah, well, I think what's so interesting about that is in a lot of like, obviously, I think so much of this film is about, yeah, examining those that conditioning, the the constructs and, and the barriers uh, and, and obviously the liberation aspect. But I, I do feel like in a meta sense, this is such a pure extension of the act of acting, right? Like getting back to that that childlike sense of of play and, and, and like rediscovering, I guess, the feeling of of performing for for the first time. I, I don't know if that was something that was appealing to you when you were exam when you were like considering the project, but I didn't think of that. But when you say it, it's quite uh, it's an interesting observation. I, yeah. I I think that's interesting. There are parallels, yeah. you know, uh, uh, her going out into the world, uh, trying to uh, curious, trying to see the truth, trying to see how to behave, trying to see what's just, what isn't just. Uh, yeah, that there's some parallel to <laughs> an, <laughs> ideal, an idealized sense of uh, what acting could be. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the reasons I, I I sort of bring that up was I I was reading recently, or I guess I was watching, you know, Mark Ruffalo sort of talk about some of the preparation uh, that you guys went through in order to to um, you know prepare for the film, and he was saying how his first day of filming was actually billed as like a screen test. And I believe it was, it was the two of you. Uh, it was one scene we have together. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm kind of curious just to hear your, your side of that. And cause that's, that's a very unusual thing to do is this, to have your first day of shooting be a, a screen test. I would have to imagine. I don't know that it was a screen test. I thought we were, just, uh -huh. I think, um, it may have been uh, because, you know, sometimes they don't make me privy to, you know, some of the technical things, you know, uh -huh. maybe it would test, uh, you know, the look or or whatever. All I know is we did that scene twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mark likes to brag about it, but he can because he's so brilliant in the film that he survived yeah. that initial panic that he had on the first day. Uh, but uh yeah, it is unusual, but I I don't remember it as a screen test. I guess we mm -hmm. turned it into a screen test. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> it's just the soften the blow, I guess, or something like that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, which we can only say because, uh, you know, he, he's so good in the movie. and it's oh, such He's a fantastic. Character. 
Yeah. 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 I well, and it's so it it it's so against uh type for him, which I think is it, it just makes for a lot of you know material to kind of sink your sink your teeth into for him, I have to imagine. Um, now I, I know a big thing for you when you're, you know, exploring characters or getting into characters is, is finding that, I, I guess like that trigger, that thing that kind of clues you into the character or, or at least, uh, makes you a bit more confident in, in like understanding who that person is. Um, not even, if I may, not oh, even, sure, yeah. if I may, I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, I just want to, before I lose the thought. It's not even understanding as much as that trigger. And that for you use a word that I use a lot. Yeah. Um, actually allows you to access stuff that you cannot reach with logic or with thinking about it or intellectually. Right. It's stuff that you can't access because it's deep within you. But there's some sort of associative power that it puts you in a way that you're able to feel something that usually isn't supported uh, you know, and doesn't come forth because it's not supported. So when it's a trigger, when I say it, it it creates some kind of reaction that you feel different. And then that all falls in tune with what your character needs to do sometimes. So, right. you know, like working with a mask, sometimes it takes you away from yourself and you look at yourself and then you get into a whole different feeling about how you look and how the world sees you. And that triggers something that you couldn't access normally if you yeah. didn't have that concrete thing to, uh, you know, push you. Yeah, yeah. So for for in the case of this film, I have to imagine it was the the prosthetics uh, that that you wore. I mean, obviously, we don't want to draw attention to it, but like I I, I think for you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, I, it's, it's, it's a huge it's a huge part of it, and it's a yeah. huge part of the character because it really conditions, you know, tells you in a very short time. This guy has not had it easy. Yeah. He's had a troubled life. And and it says volumes about why he's doing what he's doing and how he lives his life. And yeah. it it really lets you know that this is not he's not a guy that collapsed under this kind of misfortune. He's it's it it pushed him to a a, a place of compassion in the end, ironically. And that that's what gives it power for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, and, and I'm just sort of kind of curious for you, because I think what I love so much about this character are the glimpses we get into him just through him being like, there's, there's, I mean, yes, he has his little parables where he's, he's like, uh, Oh, my father did this with my thumbs and whatever, but it, it's not like, there's no moment where you're sitting there saying like, this is my life. And this is sort of how it went down. And I, I'm sort of curious, like how you, you kind of like came to those, I, I, I guess, ideas in, in, in your collaboration with Yorgos and, uh, you know, getting a better sense of who, who this guy is, because it's, it's really effective. I think when you're watching the film as a whole, mm. um, you know, the world is so complete. It tells you what to do. The writing is so good. It tells you what to do. Mm. The, the, the prosthetics, don't you make you feel like yourself so it pushes you to be someone else um you're working with wonderful actors you know uh the character falls in love with uh uh his creation it's easy to fall in love with emma when you're working mm -hmm. with her um you know it's it's a good setup for an actor yeah, <laughs> what can i sure. tell you yeah, um yeah. so these are all things you know, I, you can't explain them away. I mean, it, there's a reason that actors are kind of inarticulate often about their process, because it, for me, it's mysterious. You notice certain things, but I can't quite pin down um, how you arrive. You go there and you try to be receptive and you listen and you... Um, try to be present and something happens. And if that sounds kind of a little flat, that's about as close to the truth of how things happen yeah. as I experience it. Yeah, there yeah. Of, there are lots of other things that weigh in there, but that's basically it. And particularly in retrospect, you build up a lot of bullshit to explain away how you got there that <laughs> you really don't know. 
And that's the nature of doing press. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so true. That's fair. That's very, that's very refreshing to hear. Because I have to imagine for you, you're like you're you're grabbing at all of these just like sort of like well, nebulous concepts. Yeah, yeah, you are. Or, yeah. And, yes. And some, you know, and every actor is different, and every project's different. Sometimes yeah. you do have a plan, or you have certain things. You always have some kind of plan, yeah. but you're a fool if you don't abandon it because usually your plan is only gets you so far yeah, so yeah. Um, you know it's all you know it's all pretending and being there and receiving it and uh making mistakes and trying to put stuff out and then correcting it and trying it again and that's the nature of the beast so the important thing is to surround yourself with good people with interesting things to do and know why you're there yeah, uh, you don't have to know specifically. Like you don't have to know what this story means, or if there is a story, or uh, understand your character. But you got to know personally what uh, what gets you to the point of commitment and engagement that makes it special mm-hmm. and is um, brings you to an engagement that uh, that you're tapping into something beyond yourself. Yeah. Well, then, if I may, what was what was that for you on this project? Was it Yorgos? Because I, I know you're a big fan of his before. Yeah. Yorgos, Emma, you know, it's also it's a it's a silly thing. And I don't want to talk about it too much. Sometimes I I, I know it. But yeah, I come from a medical family and I grew up I as a young man. I was a janitor in in my father's clinic. He was a surgeon. My brother's a transplant surgeon. A lot of my sisters are nurses. My mother was a nurse. I literally, after school, sometimes I'd do my homework in the back room at the clinic, but Mm -hmm. I was always around the lab, blood, dressings, sutures, sick people, hospitals. My father used to take me on rounds. So somewhere, and given the I mean, I didn't have a bad relationship with my father like mm-hmm. this guy does. Yeah. But, you know, that's floating around there, too. Mm-hmm. And and also this invented Victorian age. I, You know, it's not a that's not a big fantasy for me. But the the kind of. Repressed, but also um, pressure to go forward I, yeah. is something that I understand from, you know, kind of a Midwestern upbringing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, so no, for sure. So there are things swirling around uh, that you say, "I am not this guy," but you know, they they call you to some sort of understanding in moments. Yeah, yeah, I, I, like almost. Yeah, you, you're. It's a bit like self, maybe not self reflective, but just reflective of a period of your life and a way for you to kind of get closer to that and and connect in a way that maybe perhaps you hadn't before. So, so when I, when I'm in, I'm giving a lecture and I'm cutting into uh, a body in front of a bunch of students. Yeah. um, I have some relationship to that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and it's real because not that I've exactly been there, but I've been around that, that kind of situation. So, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, I become the thing that I saw. Yeah. Yeah. That's got, I mean, that's got to be a really just like kind of, I, I guess, surreal in a sense experience to just, yeah, to get your head in that, um, into that place for sure. But you figure, you, you figure, you know, we're all, we're all capable of all kinds of behavior and it's yeah. just, you know, it's, it's a swirl and we end up different places and the uh, relationships get moved around. And, uh, you know, there's always some sort of connection. It's just about uh, how to uh, find it and yeah. how, how to follow it and how to um, run it down, investigate it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to kind of talk about uh, your, your, collaborations uh just sort of in general because i know you have a lot of frequent collaborators but something i really admire about you is at least you know from from what i've read and stuff is that you actually you you know you do a lot of work in like tracking down filmmakers you're interested in working with whether it was you know your ghost or or robert eggers or whatever because of how their work previously uh captivated you yeah. Oh, yeah. Sean. Yeah, exactly. Sean Baker. All all of these guys. Yeah. 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 So like, I guess what is that? Like, 
because I, I have to imagine you get a lot of people coming to you. Why is it important for you to reach out to select creatives? Because I, I mean, it's I, really I don't know. If the, yeah, yeah. It's really simple. You, you see a good movie and you say, how the hell did they do that? Yeah. I, that touched me, that engaged me, that gave me something. I'd like to be with them and be a part of that. I'd like to uh, be a part of that. I, I'd like to help them. I'd like to make, you know, flesh the thing they see. That's mm. There's great pleasure in that because not only do you feel useful, but you're going toward things that you love mm. or that interest you. So you see a movie that tickles you, that grabs you, that you say there's something there. This is, there's something true or interesting or I... I, this turns me on. Mm. Who made it? I wonder what they're like. I'd like to be in the room with them. If you get in the room with them and there's some kind of connection, yeah. then let's make something. It's yeah. kind of like that. And yeah. then if you do it once and it's nice, then you can go deeper. And and sometimes it's even nice, particularly with real a real auteur. You know, they have they have a whole story, you know, in the in their work. And it's nice to be a little thread in that story. Yeah, yeah. I think it's fun for me, and it's it, it can be fun for an audience. You know, you think of mm-hmm. uh, you think of certain uh, directors that have kind of an, an ensemble or or people that they go to, you know, whether it's Cassavetes or Fassbinder or you know, in old mm-hmm. Hollywood people that you know used to use the same people. It it can work on lots of different levels than when you uh, you're uh, part of the fabric of you know this work. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious then because I I you know obviously Robert Eggers you have Nosferatu coming up. How how do you view yourself as the character in the work of say a Robert Eggers? Well, it changes. It changes. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. Because. For example, I, I I did the lighthouse. It's a two-hander. Then I did quite actually in the scope of the movie quite a small role in uh, you know uh, the Northman, and right. now in uh, Nosferatu, uh, I play this kind of. It's a new character, but it's basically a Van Helsing character, um, hmm. uh, broadly speaking. Hmm. Um, so uh, that's all somewhat conditioned and limited by, you know, your age and all that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, years ago, when he first started talking about Nosferatu, he did say, I know you've played it before, but what do you think? You know, yeah. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. I hate these stories about uh, actors that, you know, say they've been asked to do something and but it never happened. That's not quite what I'm saying. But right, you right, know, right. you see, you know, given given what we said about an ensemble and all that, you're somewhat limited by yeah, your age and many things. So you're gonna do certain kind of functions in those stories. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I used to work. Well, I still work in theater, but I had to, uh, I worked with a company for many, many years and we would keep old work with new work. And we would sometimes bring old shows back next Mm -hmm. to new work. And a lot of the work was original work. And there were movie, uh, there were plays that we performed for almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. And in one in particular, I think I played three different roles because (laughs) I That's aged wild. out of each one, you know? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I started out as the youngest one in the company, and I ended up being the oldest. Yeah. That's that's insane. And there was, I, something, I, there was something beautiful about that. And uh, myself and an, a, an actress that um, came in about the same time that I did and still works at this theater called the Wooster Group, I always had the fantasy of how beautiful it would be to be able to perform together when we're 80 after we performed, you know, together when we were, you know, in our early twenties. And that's not just a sentimental thing. It's, you know, you're constructing something that is almost like, uh, you know, a life performance. 
Right, right. And it's creating the new within the the familiar, I guess, which is, you know, a, a big thing I have to imagine that you like. I, I, I do. I do have to start wrapping or I do have to wrap up. I'm out of time. But I really okay. appreciate you for your uh, your thoughtfulness, as always, and your 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 time. I again, your work in this film, your, your work in general is fantastic. So I, I I can't thank you enough. Great. Thank you. Take care. Take care.